Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the life cycle of HIV uh, and also antiretroviral drugs. Okay, so uh, we have now discussed um, how the virus enters the cell, we've discussed how it implants the provirus into the human genome, okay, and we've discussed associated drugs that block that phase of the life cycle. We are now at the stage where we have the viral uh, provirus inserted into the human genome, okay? So let's just draw that here. So let's say this is some chromosome, and then we have the viral provirus here. And remember, we're using turquoise to denote the coding strand, and we're using purple to denote the non-coding strand. Okay, right. Uh, so here is the po provirus. Now, I just want to remind you of the... Uh, genome of the HIV virus that we studied uh, quite a long time ago now. Okay, this picture that we studied a while ago was a picture of the single-stranded RNA. So this is the single-stranded RNA which is positive sense. This is the RNA which was within the capsid basically, within the virus. Okay, so we started off with the five prime end of the RNA here. Okay, and then right at the end we have this long terminal repeat region, the LTR portion. Then we have the gene GAG, okay, and we'll see what all these genes do very shortly. Okay, and there's a good reason why I'm drawing this out again, because we need to understand something about the DNA. The DNA is going to be backwards, basically. Okay, so then we have POL here. Okay, so remember there was this overlapping, and the way that this was uh, this made sense was because this gene was going to be read in a different frame to this gene. Okay, then we have VIF over here. Okay, and I'm just going to actually talk about VIF in a moment because VIF, uh, the viral infectivity factor, uh, actually helps the uh, virus. Uh, in the battle against ApoBec3G that we've just been discussing. Okay, but we'll come to that in a moment. Uh, then, here we had VPR, and I'm being more careful this time to try and get everything to fit in. I'll move this a little bit down here. Then we had these TAT genes here. So here's a TAT gene, and then there was another TAT gene further along, which we'll come to in a moment. Then here is VPI. VPI followed by EMV here, followed by NEF here, and then finally you have the long terminal repeats, uh, the, the free prime long terminal repeats here, okay, and then this ends with the free prime end over here, okay, like so. Right, and then you also have the other uh, TAT gene which is here. And then the two genes that I haven't shown yet, which are both REV genes. So you have one here, and then you have another one over here. Okay, so these are REV genes, and these two are TAT genes. Right, okay, so uh, that's the structure of our single-stranded piece of RNA. Remember, this coding strand is complementary to this. Okay, so if this is the five prime end of our coding strand, and this is the three prime end of our coding strand, then this will be the five prime end of our non-coding strand, and this will be the three prime end of our non-coding strand. Okay, now, basically, this piece of mRNA will be the same as this piece of non-coding strand here, remember, because it's positive sense. It has effectively the same sequence of organic bases, with the exception that thymines have rep been replaced by uracils uh, in the RNA, okay, uh, to the non-coding strand. So basically, the five prime end will be down here, and the three prime end will be down here. So effectively, the three prime end of the coding strand is equivalent to the five prime end of the RNA, and the three prime end of the coding strand is equivalent. Sorry, and the five prime end of the coding strand is equivalent to the three prime end of the single-stranded RNA. So, what now happens, basically, is that there is a single promoter region for the entire piece of DNA, uh, and this is at the five prime end long terminal repeat region, but that's now at the three prime end of this coding strand. 
okay? And what will happen is the RNA polymerase enzyme uh, within the cell will now come, bind to this promoter region, and it will make uh, a primary RNA transcript that will be complementary to the entire length of this coding strand. Okay, so here we are producing a new piece of RNA, and this RNA will be the same as this piece of RNA here. So it's a positive sense, single-stranded piece of RNA. So this is how we're now going to produce more viral genomes, because we can produce as many of these as we like. The RNA polymerase enzyme can just continue to bind there and continue to produce uh, these pieces of RNA. Okay, and therefore we can produce as many viral genomes as we want. So this is great. We can see how we're going to uh, replicate the viral genome. In fact, we already have. Uh, but how are we actually going to make the other proteins that are associated with the virus? How are we going to make those three important enzymes, reverse transcriptase, integrase, protease? How are we going to make... Um, the P24 that we need to assemble the capsid, the P17 that we need for the matrix, and the GP41 and the GP120 that we need on the viral envelope. Okay, so basically we now have this primary transcript, okay, and we understand that the primary transcript can be now used as new HIV genomes. Okay, so some of them are going to be used for new HIV genomes but some of them are also going to have to be used to actually make the proteins. Okay, so this is the primary transcript. Okay, uh, so to actually make the proteins, what we're going to have to do is splice up the primary transcript. So we're going to have to cut it up, and we're going to make final pieces of RNA, which will be much smaller, and we'll just include little bits of this, basically. And this is how we can make the different proteins, by splicing it, the primary transcript up into different bits and using the different bits, basically. Okay, so now what can happen is we can actually make each of the genes. So let's start off with VIF. Okay, so I'll start off with the gene VIF. VIF stands for Viral Infectivity Factor. Okay? And the viral infectivity factor basically binds to apobec 3 g which, remember, is this uh, enzyme, this cytidine deaminase enzyme, which protects naive T-cells against uh, HIV infection, basically. Okay? And what it does is it promotes the degradation of apobec 3 g So once this protein is bound to the apobec 3 g so let's say this is our apobec 3 g here, what will happen is that the viral infectivity factor will come and bind to this, like so, and it will promote the degradation. So apobec 3 g VIF complexes tend to be degraded by the cell, and hence this is a way that the virus can attack this protection mechanism that naive T cells have. Okay, right. Now let's turn our attention to how you actually produce those three important enzymes uh, that uh, you need within the nuclear capsid. So where do you produce reverse transcriptase, um, integrase, and uh, protease from? Well, basically you use the pole gene. And what will happen is the pole gene will be translated as one great big gene. Okay, so you'll create a polyprotein which contains the polypeptides that will make the reverse transcriptase, the integrase, and uh, the protease enzymes. And what you'll do is you'll then cut the polyprotein up, okay, like so. And what will do this cutting up, well, it's the HIV protease enzyme, which is why it was utterly essential that the uh, HIV virion that infected the cell had brought at least some protease enzymes, okay? So, what will now happen is protease will cut up uh, the polyprotein into these three separate parts, okay, and one of these will become the reverse transcriptase, okay, one will become the integrase, and one will become uh, the uh, protease. So we produce more reverse transcriptase, we produce more uh, integrase, and we produce more protease. 
So it is the pol gene which produces those free essential enzymes that uh, the virus needs to bring with it. Now I should just say, this is oversimplified. In reality, uh, the pol gene does produce a little bit more than just these three. Uh, but to keep it simple, those are the three major ones. Okay, right. Uh, now, let's talk now about GAG. Okay, so the gene GAG will be, uh, again, uh, trans, you know, it will make a piece of mRNA, and what will happen is the mRNA will be translated by the protein, and the two major proteins that you get from the polyprotein that you get from GAG, okay, so again, you produce a polyprotein, which will then be cut up, and two of the major proteins that you get from the cut up GAG polyprotein are you get P17 and P24. Okay, so P24 can now be used to assemble capsids, okay, and P17 can be used to assemble matrix. So let's see what we can now assemble within our infected cell. Okay, and I'm sorry if that was not visible beforehand. Okay, so let's say this is our infected cell. Okay, we've already discussed that we can use the primary transcripts from the provirus as the new viral genomes. So we've certainly got loads of new viral genomes. Okay, so I'll just draw the nucleus of the cell to make it look a bit more like a cell. So here we have the two new viral genomes, so that's fine. Okay, now we've got P24 capsid proteins, but we've also firstly got to put the free enzymes in. So we've got loads of these new enzymes being produced. So we can certainly put in some reverse transcriptase, some integrase, and some protease enzymes. Okay, and of course, even though all through this we've just been talking about one of each of these enzymes, in reality you'll have more than one in there. Okay, so here's these three separate enzymes. So reverse transcriptase, protease, and integrase. Okay, then what we will do is we'll assemble the capsid around because we've got this P24. So we can assemble capsids within the, um, uh, within the cytoplasm. Okay, we've also got the P17 so that we can assemble the matrix. Okay, and now all we need to do is bud out and get a coating of viral envelope, basically. So I'll draw the matrix now, which comes from the P17. But remember, what do we need in the viral envelope? We need GP41 um, proteins, and we also need GP120, and we need them complexed together. Okay, so when we bud out, we want the membrane to have GP41 and GP120 in it. And this comes from uh, the uh, gene ENV here. Okay, so ENV, again, will be translated as a polyprotein, and the polyprotein uh, is called GP160, but then the GP160 polyprotein will be broken down by, again, HIV protease into GP41 and also GP120. And these will then be put on the membrane of the infected cell. So here's the GP41 and here's the GP120. And then when the virus particle now buds off this infected cell, okay, so I'll draw a small picture of it here, so it's budding off here, taking a coating of the cell's membrane, like so. So here's the nucleus again. I'll just colour it in black to make sure that it's distinguishable. And then the virus particle, all of the inner bits will be in here, so here's the matrix, here's the nuclear capsid, and I won't attempt to draw any smaller detail than that, so here's the nuclear capsid in purple, Okay, here's the matrix in turquoise, and of course, when you actually do bud off now, you'll have GP41 and GP120 complexes in your membrane, and this is how you produce then new viral particles. Okay, so the final antiretroviral drug I want to discuss is that you can inhibit protease, okay? So the final class of antiretroviral drugs 
are protease inhibitors. And these are drugs which inhibit the HIV protease enzyme. And if you inhibit the HIV protease enzyme, then you can see that there's going to be a problem with the viral life cycle. Because the viral life cycle relies on these polyproteins being able to be cleaved uh, into smaller proteins, which are then the functional proteins. So we've used HIV protease here to break GP160 into GP41 and GP120. We used it here to break the GAG poly protein into P17 and P24. We used it here to change the um, the um, pole polyprotein into reverse transcriptase, integrase, and protease. If you inhibit it, then you're not actually going to be able to produce the functional proteins from the polyproteins. Okay, and an example of a protease inhibitor drug is a drug called sequinavir. Okay, so that now concludes our discussion of the HIV life cycle and the uh, antiretroviral drugs.